Hello everyone, this is Matthew Fraley with BreakpointTrades.com. We've been bringing you advanced technical analysis, market commentary, trade ideas, and mechanical trading systems algorithms. And we've been doing that since 2003 for individual traders, investors, and professional institutions. All right, crazy day for the market. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm recording this newsletter on Tuesday around 11.30 p.m., November 30th, the last day of the month. So technical review of the markets and mechanical systems. We already sent out our newsletter to our subscribers hours ago, but it was such a crazy day. I decided to do a, another video here. Normally I wouldn't do a video, you know, the next day after my video on Monday, but crazy day for the markets. So again, we're going to discuss some of the systems, the reversion to mean systems. Some of those took a second entry today. We'll look at the major indexes, bonds, some sectors, commodities, precious metals, and a few stocks. All right. So quick notes here. Today's session can be characterized as apple or bust type of day. So when I show you the heat map below, you'll see what I'm talking about. Pretty much apple was one of the only main stocks up. There was a bunch of posts on Twitter. I'll talk about that in a minute, but crazy day. Breath was absolutely horrid. Over 900 stocks on the NYSE and NASDAQ made 52-week lows. That's not just down, but 52-week annual lows. All right. Uh, what scared the market today was Chairman Powell, the Fed, came out to retire the word transitory inflation. So he discussed that about inflation being much more of a problem now. And he also mentioned that bad word taper, that he may have to do it sooner than he thought. Markets obviously cannot handle that. Markets are like a an addicted heroin addict. If you take that heroin away instantly, they go into convulsions, withdrawal symptoms, and that's kind of how the market is. But let's go ahead and get started here. So first off, something funny here. This is a, I don't know, a while back I made this t-shirt as a little satire joke about the Fed's endless comments about, you know, don't worry, Inflation's only transitory. Well, we can kiss that out the out the window. Again, the vast majority of the population understood that. Go to the stores, you know, look at the prices. Everyone knew this, but the Fed kept saying this over and over again, and now they're retracting it. So, so Fed Chair Powell basically became Captain Obvious today with his statement. Anyway, I won't be able to wear that shirt out in public anymore, I guess. So let's move on. Since it's the end of the month, this is a monthly chart of the S&P. We ended with a gravestone doji negative RSI divergence. This, guys, is one ugly chart. I got to say, Arnold from The Predator put it best when he said one ugly motherfucker clearly December is going to be an important month how we ended this candle but let's be honest we have had such a hell of a run from this March 2020 low as I've been saying, the market is due for some sideways correction chop. And I think we're definitely due for it in 2022. All right. But very ugly candle to end November. Next, this was trending on Twitter on Tuesday, the heat map. Here's from one person. Bloody red, except for Apple. Here's another one from Finviz. Basically, Apple and Pfizer. So a lot of jokes out there about can Apple hold up the entire market. Here's 
basically the broth today. So I'm not going to go through all these, but the S&P, 493 stocks fell, 9 were up, and 43 made 52-week new lows, while 6 made new highs. Here's on the S NASDAQ, 3,300 fell, and 618 made new 52-week lows. And that's what we've been seeing for a couple weeks. We've been warning about this negative breath rearing its ugly head on the market. And it's really you know, started to play out since late last week. Moving on to the indexes. So here's what transpired today with the indexes. Down a route anywhere from 1.6 to 2%. Here you go for the week. The NASDAQ is still up slightly. Remember, for the NASDAQ 100, for example, Apple represents 11%. And seven stocks represent 50% of the movement, 52% of the movement in the NASDAQ 100. So we have just a handful of stocks, seven to 20 stocks that are masking the index is what's been going on under the surface. And when you get that, usually you run into trouble, all right? Think about it analogous to be, you know, where the, you have a war and instead of the soldiers on the field fighting, you have the generals. I mean, what kind of sense does that make? Market sectors, obviously all the sectors read here, the 21 sectors we follow. U.S. dollar, big pullback today down about a half percent. Cryptos, Bitcoin was weak, but Ethereum was quite nice, quite strong. Commodities all to the downside despite the falling dollar. Precious metals down as well, and you can see the action in bonds. TLT had a big day. Next, here's an image from Sentiment Trader. It shows the instances where you've had 12 combined NYSE and NASDAQ Hindenburg warnings. That's the negative breath. And, um, you know, you can see some of the in the past. But again, we've been talking about these negative breath glaring issues for at least two weeks now. So let's take a look at some of these charts. Here's the NASDAQ. Here's the new 52-week lows. Remember I talked about this a couple weeks ago when the NASDAQ was testing its highs, all-time highs. You had brand new 52-week lows spiking. You don't see that when indexes are at all-time highs. All right. And you can see at the same time you had new 52-week, I'm sorry, this is 52-week lows, and you had new 52-week highs, you had a negative divergence here. This indicator down here is the difference between these two indicators. And I have the Bollinger Bands on it. Now, you can see right currently the NAHL, again, which is the difference between the 52-week highs and lows, is actually below its lower Bollinger Bands. A lot of times when that happens, you usually get some sort of bounce. You can see some of the times in the past here. So... We'll see if we bounce tomorrow. Futures are up at the moment. Some of our systems went long. We are quite oversold. By the way, this nice clean chart, our subscribers at Breakpoint, we freely give you the live chart URL so that you can follow it on your own, edit it, do whatever you want. Here's the NYSE equivalent. Same deal. We, took, we showed how the New 52-week lows were spiking over the last couple of weeks. And, of course, you can see the difference down here. This is also very oversold in the short term. So likely to get some sort of bounce on the NYSE. You can see closed actually a little below its 200-day moving average today. And this chart was also really standing out to me. So here's the NAHL, which I just showed. This had went negative while the NASDAQ was basically at the highs. But it's these two very common indicators down here. The percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average in the NASDAQ and the 50-day moving average. So 
Back here when the NASDAQ was making new all-time highs a couple weeks ago, this was right around 36 to 37%. Okay. This indicator should have been up around 70, 80 percent, kind of like it was back here. You can see this fell below the 50 percent area way back in July. So since this July time frame, it's never recovered, despite the fact, you know, the Nasdaq made new highs back here in August, pulled back. We had an ABC correction here, but then rallied to new all time highs. Fewer stocks participated. So under the surface, you had a lot of stocks, you know, like Stitch Fix, et cetera, making new lows and masking into the surface. So another analogy would be, you know, seeing a person on the street, they look fine and doesn't seem wrong with them, but they have a cancer under the surface that's not visible, that's eating away. So this is indicative of those you know, the market just being led by a handful of stocks. All right. So currently, this is now at 28%. When I looked at the past, usually the NASDAQ would be, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20% off the highs. And even with today's move, it's only down about 3.5% from the highs. So this is very, very skewed. Again, think about it, only 28% of the stocks in the NASDAQ are above their 28, their 20, their 200 day moving average. And again, up here at the highs, it was the mid thirties. This is unprecedented. Here's another worrisome chart longer term. I showed this the other day, the NHL plotted as a cumulative. You can see it's slicing below these long term moving averages. Now this indicator does lag quite a bit guys, but sometimes when it gets going, it goes on a momentum and uh, you could see some examples in the past. So, you know, this is worrisome here for the future. doesn't mean we can't have some sort of Santa Claus rally, stuff like that. But, you know, for 2022, this could be a problem. The VVIX indicator, this gave a great early warning for the market back in early November when it crossed up over 110. It did that twice right here and right here in mid-November near the highs. Remember, the 110 area is what we call the VOMA line. You can Google that. But your signal is when the VVIX is below 110 and crosses up above 110. Sometimes it's early, but it's been a damn good signal, early warning sign for the markets this year. And it did a really good job this time as well. Again, if you're a member of Breakpoint Trades, we give you the live chart URL to this to use on your own. Let's go ahead and move on to the market. So here's a daily view of the major indexes. Here's the Dow at the top. Remember the Dow is only 30 stocks. Nice sell-off from the early November highs. You can see this area, which we were watching to see if it would hold the support a couple weeks ago. Didn't. We sliced right through it. Here's the S&P. We're basically testing this area. So this is still potential support for the NASDAQ 100. But again, remember that's skewed by those seven stocks controlling 52% of it. Here's the NASDAQ itself still holding that. And of course, the Russell at the very bottom, remember it broke out of this nine month range. It did have a rally up, had a black candle here stalled. We expected a pullback, but it did not find support here. And this has been the ugliest index. So a little oversold now. Let's we'll see if we can get a bounce. Moving on to the S&P chart. So here's the daily S&P chart we showed over the weekend. We stalled right at this upper trend line resistance, which has been tagging all these highs. We had that doji here. We had divergences. We've had a nice sell-off here. Now right here, basically the September highs, you have the 50 day moving average in here in red coming up. So this is a big support. You know, we had divergence here also on the MACD. We had some volume capitulation today. Take a look at that. It was basically a 90 down day. So this is an area probably to bounce, but will that be it? Or do we bounce and form a lower high? That's the question. But I think short term, we probably bounce or we tag this area and then bounce. See the moving average ribbon here. It's pinching nicely. 
It's these areas from a pinching area where you look for trade opportunities. And it still is in a bullish configuration. Here's another daily view of the S&P with FIBs. You can see also we're right at this 38% FIB retracement from this low to this high. So as far as a wave count perspective, we don't like to get into wave counts too much because they get quite subjective. But we pretty much obviously had a, some sort of wave three high back here in August. We had an obvious ABC zigzag wave four correction there, again, which we talked about during September. Very obvious. And we're rallying up. So we're in some sort of wave five up here, but is wave five over or is that simply wave one of five and this is wave two of five, you know, because of the holidays, Christmas holidays, we could still have some sort of rally up. I'm definitely open to that possibility, but definitely longer term guys, I do believe say in 2022 sometime, we'll have to work off some of those larger issues. Here's a two hour chart of the S&P. And again, you can see this wave cap, this five wave uptrend we've had since that October low. Like I said, on the daily chart, if you go back to that, you can see, you know, wave three high back here in September, wave four pullback. And this is a wave five up here. But like I and this wave five, you can count the five wave structure. One, two, three, four, five. But like I said, that could just be on a bullish count. That could simply be wave one of five. This is wave two of five. All right. And wave twos of five can retrace a good 50% or even 60%, 1.8% of the whole thing. So it may not be done even under that scenario. So we had a nice five wave completion here. And again, guys, a couple weeks ago, when we had all those negative breath readings, we had all those warnings, we had a Hindenburgs, and you had a five wave completed structure with a wedge, with MACD divergence. Don't you think that was, a, and the VVIX going above 110, the VOMA line, don't you think that was an area to say in your IRAs, your longer term accounts to greatly reduce your positions? So. Anyway, use that as a learning going forward when you see these kind of structures like that. That's the time to peel it back. Didn't mean you had to go full bore short, something like that, but it was definitely a time to not be throwing caution into the wind. Now, short term though, we do have a little divergence here on the RSI. We're quite oversold. Let's see if we bounce. MACD, no divergence here though. Looks ugly still. Here's the 60 minute chart I showed on Monday. So, you know, we've first off the moving average ribbon here. You can see it went from a bullish stacking here. It flipped and all these pinches on the other side have been short opportunities. You can see the first sell off here, rally up. We formed a lower high on that moving average pence. That was a good shorting opportunity, but you had a really good shorting opportunity. The real obvious one was once we broke this Trend line support got oversold here. Notice your stochastics got oversold. You rallied up, stalled at this broken trend line, became resistance. You had a moving average ribbon pinching here. It's overbought stochastics. This was really your low risk short, and we came down. Now there is a potential little support here. Um, again, a little RSI divergence. Now, one thing to note though, there is some unfilled open gaps from back here in mid-October. And those could be magnets eventually. Those unfilled gaps on the S&P do like to be tagged. So be aware of that. Moving on to some other charts. Here's these cycle time frames I like to look at with the cycle indicators and the ATRs. This is your daily. Um, this is your half day. Note on the half day, the 60 length stochastic, it's testing this 50% area. That tends to be a very important area on the 60 length stochastic. So if you use stochastics, I suggest you also add a 60 length. This 50% area is a really good guide. So this is an area where it's either gonna bounce or not. And you can see on the 120 minute what happened when we lost that, it became resistance on this bounce on Monday. 
Notice price stalled at the ATR. Now in the 60 minute time frame, you can see how the 60 stochastic lost the 50% back here on the 23rd, the previous week. Back tested the underside of 50%, good short, and the same here on Tuesday. Also, the cycle indicator has been pretty good. That's your cycle support, cycle resistance in magenta, cycle support in cyan. And price has been responding pretty well to that. You can see we got some cycle buys today, so maybe we bounce a little bit. This has also been a good guide, my move on average ribbon with our BPTMA Deluxe. You can see when the BPTMA gets too wide from the ribbons, like here, you do for a bounce, stuff like that. Here's a 10 minute view of the S&P. Some wave counts. Now short term, this I can see five waves down here. So this does suggest some sort of bounce even under a bearish view. So that's why I'm open for a bounce on Wednesday. Next, here's the triple Qs. They were down today, but they weren't down that much. Here's some of the reasons why. Take a look at this. Seven stocks, and I count it seven, even though there's eight, because you have Google twice. Let's just count it Google. Count it one. Apple's 11.3%, and Apple was strongly up today. It was up 3%. So it skews this. So you have this handful of stocks controlling so much of the NASDAQ. All right. And I talked about this support here. Kind of has a little head and shoulders slanted look to it, doesn't it? If this does lose this area, that wouldn't be good. You know, that would be a support, but that could take this down into the leg. Short term, no, I think we could bounce. Here's the daily kiss for the triple Q. Still holding the ATR here and the DVT. Here's the triple Qs on the two hour time frame. We had that completed five waves as I discussed. I discussed that last week on the newsletters. And uh, we'll see how this unfolds. Here's the IWM small caps. Again, IWM, they broke out of this range. So they did provide a breakout. You had a warning of a pullback here. You had a black candle. These black candles are usually omens for some sort of reversal. You had the wide moving average ribbons and we sold off. Now at at the time, I was thinking it would try to bounce here, but it didn't. It stalled or it just kept going. And this has been the ugliest chart, the canary on the co mine. And um, getting oversold, we asked capitulation volume. But longer term, this chart has a, gives a, has a lot of problems. You know, it's hard to make a bull case for this chart anymore. So, quite an ugly chart. Here's a two hour time frame. A little bit of divergence here on the RSI indicators short term. Here's the VIX. The VIX, as you'd expect, you know, went back outside its Bollinger Bands today. So if the market wanted to sell off more, this could run also go up a bit. Lately, the, the last two VIX Bollinger Bands buy signals haven't worked too well, have they? The last two. Quite interesting. Oh, let me give you an update on the spy systems. So let me pull that. So here is the spy systems. The spy systems, it's a collection of 21 reversion of mean systems. Well, 20 reversion of mean systems. There's one system that's not reversion of mean, it's this breakout. Otherwise, all the other systems are reversion of mean, meaning you know, if in an uptrend, you get a pullback, they look to buy that, look for a statistical opportunity. So we've actually had some various subsystems buying this pullback for a trade. The trend pullback right here. You can see it took an entry on Friday. It did not take a second entry today. Um, the CCI oversold system, that took an entry on Friday and a second entry today. And the QE BTS, that also took a second entry today. All right. Again, guys, if you're new to the reversion of mean systems, that's what they do. They're not feel-good systems. When these systems go long, emotionally, it's hard to follow them at first. Because, again, they're buying when everyone else is selling, when things look ugly, when the news headlines are the worst. And they can be early at times. 
but that's what they do and then they'll sell some sort of bounce when you get it all right so as far as statistics the uh, cci oversold here let's take a look at this one So here you go, profit factor of 23.79. So that means about for every dollar it lost, it made 23, 24, around 90, 89 and a half percent winning trades, decent profit target. So this one trick triggers whenever you get a very deep oversold CCI. The trend pullback has probably the, it has the weakest statistics of the three. Again, it's still a decent, decent stats, but it's the weakest of the three. So let's take a look at those. There's your profit curve again, going all the way back to 96. Profit factor of 11, which again, a lot of, you know, if you know anything about trading mechanical systems a profit factor of three is decent so 11 is still outstanding but it is lower than the others 188 total trades 85 percent winning trades these systems can have up to three entries now the qe bts let's take a look at that one so here's some of the individual long subsystems oh another system actually went long today the s trap remember all these systems are their own system they're all doing different things so here's the QE BTS system. Let's take a look at those stats. Profit factor of 35, 135 trades, 90.37% winning trades. Very good profit factor. So that's a decent one, and this entered had a second entry today. So these systems are simply looking at this point for a bounce back, maybe a close over an eight or nine day simple moving average, something like that. All right. Oh, and bring up another thing here. So this workspace here, oh, not this one. This one right here, I call it my generals. This is the triple Q's NASDAQ up here. All these charts have the KISS systems on it. That's our proprietary trend type system with these uh, trailing stops. So triple Q's up here and these other seven stocks represent 52% of the NASDAQ. So Apple right here, up 3% today. You can see the system went long back here on October 7th. You can see you got a new DVT today. That's a dynamic variable trigger stop. All the other ones were down except I guess Tesla, but you could see when a lot of these went back long, you know, Microsoft, that's the second waiting component on went long on October 15th. Amazon here, probably around the same time, I guess, 15th. But they're all the DV, they're still above their DVTs. Some of these are getting close though. Uh, Google had a pretty good pullback. And of course, Facebook had a pretty decent pullback. But I call these the generals because again, these seven stocks represent 52% of the NASDAQ. All right, moving back to the charts, other charts. So here's a uh, high yield corporate bonds. Again, they made that double top back here in early November. Nice sell off since that was an early warning as well, guys. The market tends to be correlated with this. And we had a we saw a lagging action. Looking at a few of the sectors, XOK technology still looks pretty strong, doesn't it? But here's the problem. Apple represents 22 percent of it. So does Microsoft. So out of those two stocks, this ETF is 44% of these two stocks. I mean, kind of makes it worthless almost at the moment. And then with NVIDIA, you're at 52% with three stocks. Without Apple, this chart would look a lot different today. XLC communication sector. Now this one doesn't have Apple. It has a lot of FANG stocks, Facebook, Google, Netflix, um, you know, some of these others. This chart has looked ugly for a while. I talked about this a couple weeks ago and a week ago, the shelf support, and that was lost last week. Then look at today's sell off. Ugly, ugly. Little RSI divergence here short term. Maybe we get a bounce. 
Healthcare, nice sell off here. That's your 200 day moving average is your longer term support. Financials, they lost this little shelf support here. 200 day moving average is just below to monitor. Uh, transports, also a big sell off. Now it's near its 200 day moving average. Biotech, bounce today. I wouldn't be surprised to see this try to bounce. Now, this area is a resistance. Biotech's been one of the weakest sectors this year. It peaked out back here in February, so it's been had a hell of a correction. Here's the weekly view of biotech. So this area is resistance. I, quite honestly, I do hope biotech eventually goes down again. I would love to buy it down in this range, guys. To me, down in here, 105, 100 would be a fantastic swing opportunity. You don't always get what you want, but it's something to be aware of if it goes down. Commodities got shit can today as well. Nice correction. 200-day moving average here on the ETF. So far, could be an ABC correction, but all commodities got hit today. Here's crude oil. Big sell-off again. Lost the 200-day moving average just Yesterday's video newsletter, I said this little bounce was nothing, and it was a big sell-off today again. So all these commodities got hit today. Here's natural gas. Lost the shelf support. Got a support here now and the 200-day. I'd probably be a buyer down in those areas. Here's the one of the ETFs, UNG, to monitor. DBA, the AGs got hit also as well. Uh, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin was down a little bit today. Remember that had a nice divergent high back here, MACD, which we warned about. This is an area to monitor now, these moving averages. But Ethereum had a great day. Ethereum's been stronger here. Took out this coil earlier today. Gold, well, gold smold. Could not, you know, stalled at resistance here a couple weeks ago. It still looks weak. It needs emergency help. GDX, gold stock, same deal. Ugly sector. As far as uh, some of these stocks, Apple, I mean, look at this. Really didn't rally on any news. You know, it is what it is. Had a flag, big pop. You know, chart is bullish, but... Look at the other FANG stocks. Now, Microsoft looks vulnerable here, guys. You got a sh little shelf support. If that's lost, we could have a quick move down to the 50-day. That one looks vulnerable. Amazon, a little pullback. We had that double top back here. Facebook, Facebook got metaverse, whatever you want to call it, got smulched today. Google had a double top back here, you know, and that's been working off playing out Netflix big sell off there too AMD been a runner it's one of my pet stocks one of my favorite stocks we had as a long idea back here in October moving average ribbons were squeezed pinched all together there that's your low risk trade opportunities for runs it looks quite extended now look at this divergence setting up here so be cautious if you're long Get some MACD divergence. You may be even get a short out of this eventually. I'm not going to go over any trade ideas tonight, guys. We did put some on our trading community. And uh, again, we'll see what happens on Wednesday. He has features right now are up about 38 points. All right. Again, a lot of you might be reviewing this video on Wednesday morning. And we'll see what the action brings. Take care.